guys welcome back to the Moran family so today's video is going to be all about how I weaned my baby I'm actually in the process of doing it with my youngest daughter Jade so I'm gonna just share what's been working for me what's worked in the past because I do have three daughters Layla who is eight Aurora who is four and Jade who is one so this is my third time weaning stopping breastfeeding so i'm gonna just share like what's worked for me some tips and advice so let's go ahead and jump right into it so i have my phone here i wrote down a ton of notes because i don't want to forget anything so we're gonna just dive into it so like i said i breastfed all of my babies so jade is my third daughter so this is my third time breastfeeding. This is also my third time weaning. So to give you guys some background, my oldest daughter, Layla, she was exclusively breastfed. She was my first baby. So I put a lot of pressure on myself as a mom to breastfeed her. And I didn't understand that even if you pump and you give your baby breast milk in a bottle, that is still exclusively breastfeeding. So I put a ton of pressure on myself to breastfeed her i didn't pump i didn't give her formula so she was 100 percent exclusively breastfed all the way until she was a year so the way i weaned her was cold turkey once she was about it was like the week before her first birthday i just did cold turkey i was taking um some medications for a like infection that i had so I didn't want to continue breastfeeding her while taking that medication. So I just like completely stopped breastfeeding her. And I would not recommend it because one, it was hard on me emotionally because I had this amazing bond with her breastfeeding. And just to like completely stop that and to see her like crying and stuff was really hard on me emotionally it was also really hard on me physically because i didn't give my body time to adjust so i became really engorged thankfully i didn't um get like any infections or anything like that from being engorged because you can actually get infections such as mastitis and i actually had that this time around with my youngest daughter jade absolutely terrible but anyways so since i did cold turkey i became like really engorged swollen and my boobs were like rock hard it was so uncomfortable so highly recommend do not doing cold turkey but i know everybody's situation looks a little different because you may need to stop breastfeeding suddenly because of work or you know you're putting your child in daycare there's like a million reasons why you may want to start weaning and stop breastfeeding so i know everybody's situation looks a little bit different but if you do have the means definitely do not do cold turkey it was so hard physically and emotionally so i would not recommend that so with my second daughter aurora when i breastfed her i also did formula bottles so i would recommend getting your baby used to a bottle which is what i did with aurora because since she had formula she was taking a bottle so she was used to it so when it came time to wean her i didn't have the issue of trying to get her to take a bottle and trying to find one that works for her which is the issue that i now have with my youngest daughter i can't believe i even made this mistake but it's okay it happens life happens i didn't give her a bottle as much as i said i would when i was pregnant with her and the reason for that being is because originally the reason why i wanted to give her some bottles here and there is so that my husband could help out with feedings and he did occasionally but they kept changing like his work schedule and all that stuff so it was mostly me who was breastfeeding her so i kind of just like gave up on the bottle and just you know put her on the boob so that's why i didn't really give jade a bottle so the issue that i ran into it now with weaning her is she doesn't really take the bottle i feel like i'm kind of starting to ramble now so i'm gonna just look into my notes and just kind of like break down the whole weaning process so my first tip and i kind of already touched base on this is to try to gradually wean so that way it's easier on yourself and your baby and you can have time to adjust physically and mentally because weaning can actually be like this really 
emotional process especially if you've been exclusively breastfeeding or even if you haven't been exclusively breastfeeding it's just like this unexplainable bond that you can't really put it into words unless you've been through it and you've breastfed so it can really be emotional also when you're breastfeeding like your hormones are just doing a bunch of things and then when you stop breastfeeding it drops and it's just like this whole process so it can definitely be hard emotionally too but physically is the main reason why i would say to do it gradually that way your milk supply has time to adjust and it can slowly diminish because if you do it cold turkey like i was mentioning you become engorged and if you become engorged you run the risk of an infection such as mastitis and trust me you do not want that i got it for the first time ever this time around with my youngest daughter jade and it was absolutely terrible i have never felt that bad i had like the fever and the chills and the body aches it was like the flu times 10 it was so bad so you definitely want to give your body time to adjust and have your milk supply slowly diminish versus doing it cold turkey and it just like messes everything up so definitely do it gradually so the way that i'm currently weaning my daughter and i also use this method for my second daughter aurora and it worked perfect and it seems to be going good again so the way i have been weaning her for the past like two months now because like i said i'm doing it very gradual and very slowly because she has been my most like attached baby to breastfeeding so i'm just like really taking my time with it, trying to take off the pressure. So the way I've been doing it is working on dropping the daytime feedings. So most babies are going to be really attached to those nap time and bedtime feedings because it's a way for them to, you know, have comfort and wind down to go to sleep. So definitely work on dropping the daytime feedings first. So the way I do it is I drop a daytime feeding and I replace it with you know either formula or whole milk since my daughter is already 15 months i've been doing whole milk i am not doing formula at all because she doesn't really need it anymore since she is over a year so i've been doing whole milk so i've been dropping a daytime feeding every like couple days this will depend on how your baby is doing so if your baby is having a harder time with adjusting with dropping those daytime feedings then i would drop a feeding like every week or even like every other week it just kind of depends on your baby's needs and how your body is adjusting how your baby is adjusting so once you have dropped majority of all of your daytime feedings then i would drop the nap time feedings and then lastly the bedtime feedings because bedtime is usually in my experience at least bedtime feedings are always the hardest because you know that's mainly like comfort nursing so bedtime can be really challenging another thing i will say too is that it is totally possible to still do like nighttime feedings if you wanted to and then like not nurse throughout the day trust me i know that sounds really odd because breastfeeding is like a supply and demand so you may think okay if i'm not breastfeeding throughout the day then i'm not gonna have like any milk but you will be surprised how amazing like milk production is it's so crazy i did this with my second daughter so she kind of also self weaned herself too so we weren't breastfeeding at all during the day towards the end of our breastfeeding journey she did not get boob at all during the day but at night she did and my milk supply completely adjusted i wasn't like getting engorged during the day i wasn't leaking at all my milk just completely adjusted to what she needed at the time which was only a nighttime feeding. So if you wanted to do that too, you totally could do it. So if you are a working mom, you can slowly get rid of those daytime nursing sessions to where your baby will only get like a bottle when they're at daycare or something throughout the day. And then at night, when you come home, you have your baby again, you can just, you know, nurse at night. So that is something you can totally do too. So you can also combo feed is what it's called. So you can do the formula or the whole milk, whatever it is you're doing throughout the day, and then you can nurse at night. So that's also another option. So that's kind of where my goal is at right now, because like I said, she's just super attached right now, especially with teething. So 
I don't have any plans to really drop those nighttime feedings right now. I'm just mainly working on the daytime feeding. So combo feeding is a option that you can do, which is what I'm doing. So now that I've kind of explained how I do the weaning process, let's talk about how you go from exclusively breastfeeding to giving your baby formula or whole milk in a sippy cup bottle. So for my daughter Jade, I am switching to sippy cups. So the sippy cup that I've been loving is by the brand Replay. Love these ones, they are super minimal. They come in a ton of colors. We also have like a pink one and I just love them because they're minimal and you know, they're just really easy to clean. They're not insulated at all, so keep that in mind. But they're just really easy to clean because you just have, you know, the cup and then the top part and then this little piece just pops out. So just really easy to clean. And then the main reason why I actually chose these is because they're actually spill proof so she's still getting used to holding the sippy cup because she usually drinks out of a open cup or a straw cup so with the sippy cup she's still kind of learning that you have to hold it up when you drink it so she kind of gets frustrated sometimes as she throws it on the floor so i love that these are spill proof because when she does throw it nothing is going on the floor or anything like that so definitely recommend these but i do have some bottles to share with you guys so this bottle right here is one that I love. This is the Como Tomo. This is a bottle that really just kind of like, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It just kind of is like a mother's nipple. So it's a really good bottle. And then down here is just like really soft and flexible. So I just really love these bottles. And then these two right here, I loved with my second daughter, Aurora. Whenever I weaned her from breastfeeding, I gave her these and she loved these. She took these so easily. I did not have any problems going from breast to bottle with her. She took these right away. So these are a really great transition from breast to bottle because these are kind of like a sippy cup in a way. So let me show you the difference between them all. So here's kind of what a bottle nipple looks like, right? And then here's what the sippy cup spout looks like. And then here's what these ones look like. So as you can see, they're soft like a nipple, like a bottle nipple would look like. But they're also like in the shape of a sippy cup. So these are really great transition between bottle to sippy cup. So I definitely recommend these. And these are by the brand Nuke, by the way. They have so many cute like Disney prints. So they have like Mickey Mouse. And then this one was Aurora's favorite. It has Jessie and Woody on it. So if you're looking for a good like in-between bottle sippy cup, definitely recommend these. But again, every baby is different. So you might have to go through a ton of bottles and sippy cups just to find one that really works for your child. I had to go through quite a few to find one that Jade likes and she really likes that replay cycle one that I showed you guys. So now let's talk about how you actually get your baby to drink formula or whole milk, especially if you're exclusively breastfeeding. This one might be a challenge. I had this issue with Jade because like I said, she didn't really get that many bottles. She had like a few formula bottles here and there, but she for the most part was just breastfed off my boobs so getting her to actually take like a sippy cup or a bottle was quite the challenge so the key to this is going to be doing it gradually again and you will need a little breast milk stash you don't need anything crazy so if you're able to definitely pump and have a little stash in your freezer because you want to mix your breast milk with either the formula or the whole milk that you are doing. That way your baby can gradually get used to the taste of formula or whole milk because it is going to be a huge shock to your baby going from breast milk to formula or whole milk because they just completely taste different. So it's definitely going to be an adjustment. So if you're able to, definitely pump and have a little stash. So when you do give your baby the bottle, or the sippy cup, what you're going to do is you're going to mostly, when you first start off, you're going to mostly fill, so for example, here's um, 
the bottle so you're going to mostly fill you know the whole thing with breast milk and then you're going to put just a little bit of formula when you start off and then in a couple days or so if your baby has adjusted to that well you are going to put less breast milk in it and then add some more formula and then in a couple days again you can add a little bit more formula and then eventually the whole bottle is going to be formula because your baby slowly adjusted to it so definitely do it gradually you can just mix the breast milk with either the formula or the whole milk so your baby can get used to it when i started giving jade whole milk she was so not about it so i started off really like minimal i started off with like less than an ounce and i would try to get her to drink that and then in a couple days when she would just kind of drink it like easier than like spitting it out i bumped it up to like one ounce and then i would just like gradually increase it so now she is up to drinking um i'm not 100 percent sure on the ounces that she's drinking because there's no um like marks on these cups so just keep that in mind if you do buy these but i give her about like half a cup i would say so maybe like four ounces i'm not 100 percent sure but i give her about like half a cup now during each like feeding so that's kind of where she's at so she doesn't get too much milk but i did run that through her pediatrician and she is totally fine with how jade is doing so if you have any questions too about like feeding how many ounces you should give your baby always talk to your child's pediatrician because you will get the best response off of there definitely take what i'm saying with a grain of salt because i am no expert by any means i'm just sharing my experience and what has worked for me and my babies so if your baby is flat out rejecting the bottle or the sippy cup they are not about the formula not about the whole milk if you have the means ask for help so have maybe like an older sibling um, your spouse maybe a grandparent try to give your baby the bottle instead of you because if you try to do it and your baby is like screaming and crying then it's only going to make you frustrated which is going to make your baby even more frustrated because they can sense that and it's just going to be like this huge like guilt thing too like the mom guilt is going to set in and you're going to want to like give in to your baby and just give your baby the boo because you're seeing your baby crying so if you have the help definitely use it it'll be a lot easier and your baby may even be more likely to take the bottle from someone else than you because your baby is going to just you know want that comfort and your baby's gonna be like mom you're holding me why are you not giving me the boob you know so if somebody else is doing it your baby may have a more successful rate of taking the bottle with them versus with you if your baby is trying to like pull up your shirt or is asking to nurse which is what Jade does sometimes. Like the other day, she was doing the sign for Leche for me. She always does that whenever she wants it. She's been doing that. She's also been trying to like stick her hand in my shirt and pull up my shirt a lot. So whenever she is doing that and I don't want to nurse her, I try to distract her. So if I know she is hungry, then I will go get her a sippy cup, give her some milk. But if I know she's not hungry and she kind of just wants to nurse for comfort, then I will distract her. I will go grab a book and I'll read to her. I'll go grab um, some toys. Distraction will just be key to try to get her mind off of wanting to comfort nurse. So the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is engorgement. It's probably going to happen. It's a normal process of weaning. So don't be alarmed because it's just your body's way of trying to adjust and it's your milk production's way of trying to adjust to your baby's needs trying to diminish so engorgement may happen there's not really any way to fully avoid it unless you gradually wean your baby like i said but if you don't really have that time to gradually do it then engorgement is probably going to happen so what you want to avoid when you do get engorged you want to avoid pumping because if you do pump and you take out that milk that's going to trigger a letdown and when you trigger that letdown that's going to signal your body to keep producing milk which is the opposite of what you want to do when you're weaning because you want your milk production to slowly diminish so if you can definitely avoid pumping if you are extremely engorged your boobs are rock solid it hurts to even like move your arms and you are just in pain the best way to take out that milk while avoiding triggering a letdown 
is to hand express so i would do this like in the shower if you can so when you're in the shower just grab your boob and try to manually squeeze out some milk but again you want to only let out just a little bit of milk to kind of take off the edge of that engorgement feeling but again you don't want to take out too much because then you'll trigger the letdown which triggers your body to keep making milk so hand express only a little bit just to give you just a little bit of comfort when you are taking your showers avoid hot showers too so if you are like me you like your scolding hot showers avoid letting that hotness touch your breast because again that will trigger a letdown so if you can try to take cold showers so i know it kind of sucks i hate cold showers i don't know how some people can do it but definitely avoid the heat because that will trigger a letdown if you are in a lot of pain cold compresses are the way to go they actually sell like little cold gel packs specifically for your breast i believe the brand um i think it's lansino i'm not 100 percent sure but i'll link some down below so you guys can check them out so they actually sell specific cold packs for your breasts that you can put in your bra that will also give you some relief another relief that i have used every single time and it's also helped my milk supply diminish is cabbage i know it is so weird but if you go to the grocery store buy like a head of cabbage and then like rip off some of the leaves put it in your you can put it in like your freezer or your fridge sometimes for like extra coldness i've kind of like rinsed them underneath the water in the sink and then i just put it in the freezer like that that way it kind of gets like little icicles on the cabbage you know what i mean and then i put that in my bra and then whenever they get all warm again i just toss them out and then put in some cold ones again that has given me relief every single time and i also notice that i dry up quicker too when i use a cabbage so definitely recommend that all right guys well i think that is everything that i wanted to talk to you guys about weaning hopefully i didn't forget something and i hope this video was really helpful for you guys if you still have some questions or you're wondering something that i didn't touch on leave me some comments down below don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys are subscribed to the Moran family and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys also i just want to say i am wishing you guys all the best on your weaning process i know it can be hard and the mom guilt can really set in but don't let anybody tell you any differently no matter what the reason is for you stopping your breastfeeding journey it is valid mm -hmm.